Hello and welcome to my GDQ submission of Ukulele and the Impossible Lair Any% for SGDQ 2022. Now, to get this out of the way, this is a voiceover. Um, I did this run on March 26th, one day prior to me doing this voiceover, because as of the time of submissions, I have been rather rusty with any percent. I intend to practice, of course, but actively trying to think of commentary and perform this run is very challenging. So, the first time Impossible Lair was showcased at a GDQ was SGDQ 2020, the first online event by Hedwig, where he showcased 24 Bs the intermediate category between any percent, which is zero bees, and all 48 bees. So what the bees do is the entire game revolves around the final level, the impossible layer, which can be accessed at any point in the game with any number of bees. But for every bee that you have, you obtain one extra hit in the impossible layer, up to 48. 24 bees is a category that allows for routing and still having a safety net of extra bees. But with any percent, which is attempting to beat the game as fast as possible, we don't want to go and obtain any of those bees. So right now you see the tutorial of the game, which happens on the start of every save file. And immediately after this tutorial, we will be sent into the impossible lair, the final stage. And right here, we see how the bees would function if we obtained any. We can just go through damage and not have to worry about how much we take. But once we go through that door on the right, we will be into the final level which is a 15 minute gauntlet of the hardest platforming in the game. And our intention is to get through it without getting hit. Now, we can get hit. We do have one regrabbable HP. When you take damage with zero Bs, Laylee the purple bat flies off of Yuka's head. And she flies around randomly. If you re-grab her, you get your hit back, but after a short time, she will fly off screen permanently and cannot be retrieved, especially in the lair. In the normal levels, there are ways to retrieve her after she's flown off, but not here. And I do get hit twice in the lair. Uh, I kept them in instead of going for a clean hitless run. That way I could show how it functions. But whenever you don't have Laylee, you also lose your ground bound ability and your midair twirl ability. Which is quite detrimental. So going up here, I attempt this skip, but unfortunately go too far and get hit. And so we see Laylee flying around. But we do re grab her. Now, the lair is split up into four sections, each starting with a boss battle and being followed by a platforming section. And every time you get past one section, you obtain a checkpoint, which in the event that uh, death does occur, especially during the marathon run, you can simply reload the last checkpoint you got to instead of going through the entire lair again. So a little backstory. If this does get accepted, this will be my first run at a GDQ. So there's, of course, the fear of nerves going into this or first run ever, as well as this being the hardest category available with Impossible Lair. But I feel that it has been substantial time that we could see this game again. And of course, I do intend to practice out of my mind 
to get consistent at this once again. All the tricks that you'd see me go for in this run would be uh, standard for what I would go for normally. Because I do believe all the tricks I do are consistent. And that of this recording, I was simply rusty. Uh, I haven't played this game in a while. In a consistent manner. Which is, again, why I'm doing this voiceover. Is... It was... I was finding it very challenging to think of commentary on the spot and rest restarting runs uh, and just repeating the same commentary whilst trying to do this. So on to the second section with the second boss fight. Now these boss fights are certainly the easiest portions uh, it is very... Well, now I'm just contradicting myself, aren't I? Uh, it is still easy to get hit in these because of how Capital B's hitbox works here. Uh, we want to run away from him as soon as we get a hit off because that will cause his iframes to disappear faster. Because if we're inside of Capital B when his iframes go away, we will immediately take damage. But these rooms are so open and spacious that re-grabbing Laylee is often rather easy. And on to the second section, which is completely full of auto-scrollers and ice physics, and the one water section. Uh, the second section is the longest section to get through. Of course, taking a death here would be unfortunate, but... Slow and steady wins the race, because this is much more of a showcase run. I'm still going through it faster than anyone uh, would feel safe doing. Like any casual players, because this is a challenge that casual players can go for. Which is beating the lair with zero Bs and zero checkpoints. But of course... Most people who would ever do this run would only ever do it once. Including a majority of the speedrunning community, such as Hedwig, who is... Hedwig has done it twice, once in a marathon. Of course, passing time here because this is the first of our elevator auto-scrollers. And now onto the water section, which uh, I do find the swimming very nice in this game, but that doesn't save me from how deadly this area is, especially this screen, because if you lose Laylee here, she will fly between the saw blades, making it uh, rather difficult to get her back. She does have a small mechanic where the... If you go away from her, she will fly towards you, and vice versa. If you go towards her, she will try to fly away from you. Which is very helpful when you're trying to be heroes and save the world. So, letting the gameplay show itself here, because uh, most of the lair can't really be sped up. Without some insane strats, the current world record holder, DKS, has a 1341 in this, which was set two years ago, I believe. Uh, and that's including the tutorial, which is about two minutes long, uh, in-game time. We normally time with in-game, but of course for a GDQ, we can't. And on to the main auto-scroller of this area, the longest one, the longest elevator right here. 
coupled with the ice physics. We take that a bit safe, just for the video, especially. Even just watching this, it's uh, rather difficult to come up with stuff to say, simply because I can only explain the game so much, uh, since it was showcased with Hedwig and Tip Daddy before. But uh, as for this, what I did on that previous rope... Uh, was setting up the cycle so that I could just hold up there. That rope is extremely deadly, but I have devised that strat. Uh, it's been... I found that out, like, two years ago, of course. And it's very good, especially for the marathon-type run. Now, we're on to the third section, which this is where the second hit does occur. Not during the boss fight, but in the second, in the third platforming section itself. We're also introduced to the one instance of RNG in this run, which is these bombs that he throws can either be the duck bombs that roll automatically, or the ones that you can grab and throw back into him. He will always throw a grabbable bomb, but he may not always throw a, a duck bomb. So taking this as fast as I can, it is possible to get quick hits uh, during this attack, but for safety measures, I avoid trying. And you see me roll into the wall there. That uh, The geometry in this game is certainly a treat sometimes with where you can stand. So on to the third section, which is a lot of spikes. Uh, this section is very fast, and it does have an auto-scroller at the end, which we can skip half of. But simply getting there is still very difficult. We hit it with the rolling deep that would make Spike Vegeta happy. Because this game does take heavy inspiration from Donkey Kong Country, as it was made by a lot of senior Rare developers. Same with the first ukulele game, which was a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. So these saw blades here, the vertical ones, I don't roll under. It is possible, but I have found that it's also possible to get hit from them while rolling under them. Just a safety measure. And so right above... Right up here is where the second hit occurs, because I did not twirl in the air, so I just run into that enemy. I have to take this a bit slow. Now we are approaching the big auto-scroller skip. We still have to wait for this platform to extend out. And this is something that I will say I need to get more consistent with because of the upcoming frog on this platform to the right. Because if he is mid-jump while you get over here, he will bounce you back into the bottomless pit, which is an insta-death. Doesn't matter if you have Lily or not. But now, going into the final section, the final boss fight, Which, again, we do take rather safe for this. Pretty sure I messed up a few quick hits. So 
So, for instance, uh, because he flew to the wall there, if I was on the left of him, he would have actually thrown the bombs into his face and skipped a bit of this phase. Just like he's going to... Or... No, he doesn't land on the bomb here. So it was admittedly a bit slower than I would have preferred, but just finishing the run is much more detrimental. I can consistently get this in 20 minutes, and I'll put the estimate at 30 minutes just like to compensate for if my nerves get the best of me during an actual marathon run. I have done this in a marathon setting, just not nearly to the same degree uh, as GDQ. Is for a small community marathon we did for the third year anniversary of the first game. And I showcased any percent at the time. Thankfully, first try. I did get hit during it, but... That was back at my peak when I felt extremely consistent with all the strats. So, welcome back. I had to mute in the first recording I did of this, and I didn't want to try to splice together audio to get my voice back in. Uh, so I just wanted to let the first run finish out. Now I'm commentating over this again. So, boss is done, uh, and we're going into the final section, the escape, which at this point... 
is the easiest part of the run. It's meant to be sped through and very reactionary. Uh, it's not impossible to get hit, but one thing for sure is uh, it's rather difficult to fall into any bottomless pits because there are hardly any. Now, a small tidbit. Right, uh, that lip that we just passed over, uh, it's possible to get height off of that and go sailing into the saw blades, like to bounce off of one of the enemies. We call it meme damage in the community, which is very bad for any percent. It didn't happen in this, thankfully. And I'm always prepared for it, but uh, it is a small tidbit, small fun fact that is always a constant pressure. But uh, we had two minutes on the timer to get through the section, and we got through it in one minute. So very fast, very speedy. But that is the run. And we get a secret little cutscene at the end here which explains the game's lore a bit more than the normal cutscene. But otherwise, this is my submission video. And here's hoping. <laughs>